episode 61, the Daily Intermission Podcast. I'm in studio by, with Nathan Brown. My name is Greg. How are we doing? We we are doing. Is that a, is that no? That must have been a car driving by. That's a like, car, yeah. How does that pick up so well? I'm not sure. That's crazy. But yeah, I'm doing pretty good, uh, all things considered. Uh, not feeling the best, <laughs> you, but... I'm yeah, telling you right now, good, like. Saturday and Sunday in Nova Scotia might have been the warmest days I've ever experienced as a human being. It's ridiculous, man. I got <clears throat> absolutely lobster fried yesterday. <laughs> I am just red. It was an absolute scorching hot weekend, but before we get into the pregame show, I did want to mention that the pregame show is brought to you by Manscaped. Go over to manscaped.com, use the code TDI for 20% off free shipping. This is the best grooming kit over... Is it 20 million users worldwide? Could be. Might be 2 million. There's a lot of people using Manscaped a worldwide. Lot. Well, it's like the best bang for your buck, man. You get on yep. there and like even with our code, there's always usually like a 50% off thing too. And there's yep. so many little gadgets they give you. For sure. Carrying case. Yep. Nose trimmer. Underwear. Yeah. That big package. Is ball underwear. butter. Yeah, the ball butter. So make sure you go check that out, guys. Best tools for your family jewels worldwide. Lots of men's are using it. Keep it groomed for, you know, whoever you have in your life or... Um, or, uh, yeah, just keep, you know, keep the grooming, uh, you know, well Trim kept. It Trim it up. Thank you, Nate, Trim it for up, closing kids. off that struggle. Yeah. It was the club championship weekend. That is why we are delayed, uh, Saturday and Sunday at our local golf club, Nate, and I, I absolutely battled, went toe to toe with the golf course and I'll take it plus 10 through two days, 75, 75. Yeah. That's pretty solid. Top 10 finish. Top 10 finish. What uh, do you think the Vegas odds would be paying? For a Greg Brown, top 10 finish. Yeah. Maybe like a plus 300. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, that's probably fair. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, tough, ten, tough 10, tough thing to do. Yeah, there's a lot of good players. There's a lot, of, a lot of players playing. Yeah, so uh, so we'll take it, and uh, actually we played worse than I did last year, um, but the course was playing much more difficult, I think, this year. Um, Some of those pin placements, man, <laughs> on, on day one on hole three. Oh, yeah. Over in the right? Yeah. Like, holy, how do you how do you attack that? No, you don't. You hit yeah. to the middle of the green, you yeah. putt down to it. Yeah. Yep. And then you blow it off the backside. <laughs> yeah. They were rolling so quick, too. I know. Really quick. I know. Yeah, the course was in tough conditions, for sure. Uh, especially yesterday, uh, chipping up to, if you missed the green, like, you couldn't stop it. You know, like, it would yeah. just bounce, and then, like, it, you're just left with such uh, long pots. So, no, the course was playing difficult, but it was... Uh, it was a good time out there. Uh, congrats to all the uh, all the players out there, and I know we have a lot of listeners who would have played. So, uh, great job, gentlemen. Yeah. But uh, Brittany Greener, uh, Nate, I'm not sure we talked about it last episode, but nine years in Russian prison mm -hmm. uh, for smuggling that uh, weed, pen, oil, or whatever she had on her. Absolutely devastating. I mean, obviously, you think we're thinking about her and, and feeling for her. I mean, nine years in Russia, how terrifying would that be? Oh, man. Um, I'm just really not sure what you can do. What the you know? I, I know I don't really know how that stuff works either. Yeah, and it's just like I mean, for the most part, you just you would feel so trap i i didn't know it was prescribed by her marijuana was prescribed by a doctor as well no way yeah which oh is my just, goodness that's what i heard the other day anyway and yeah i didn't fact check it yeah but uh no i mean it makes know, sense but i mean mouth, yeah you know in north america here you know i would say 75 percent of north america has the drug legalized and it's you know it's just certainly know, terrifying it's just when you get into these other countries yep. where it's and it's just you know you well, gotta be aware like you Russia just can't right now. do that man you can't. Yeah. Like, why even take the risk is the thing, and it's a shame. And oh, hopefully gosh. she can get out of there. But, I mean, you know, there's a lot of people still in jail for just, like, trafficking weed, you know, or anything. Yep. Like, no, for sure. Like, people everywhere that are in this way. It's a garbage <clears throat> charge. It's so, absolutely trash, It's man. so terrifying. Um, so we, we're thinking about her, and I've, obviously there's a ton of movement in the basketball world for uh, – I know BG's going around. It's kind of a trending, uh, you know, storyline. So that's not going anywhere. And hopefully, um, you know, the the government or there can be some negotiations. With well, they a, were talking about like some prisoner exchange, trade. right? Yeah, yeah, somebody in Russia, but like, yeah. or somebody they have in America for that's Russian or something. Like yeah, that. but I think the guy's like done some serious shit, <laughs> yeah. whoever it is. So they're just gonna like try and trade it off. I guess I I really don't know. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, just in the NBA world, need uh, Kevin Durant has come out and said he will not play for the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, if Steve Nash is the coach and the GM, I forget his name, is still currently there. So he wants the GM to be fired or coach to be fired. Uh, both? And, uh, or both oh, uh, for him to be playing there next year. So, Dude, like, that's kind of outrageous. It's an outrageous it's Steve request. Steve Nash. <laughs> like, it's not like it's some, like, rando. It's crazy. Yeah. It's craziness. I and mean, you know what the craziest thing about it is? It's probably going to happen. It, yeah, well, it's... You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's, They might fire the both of them. They may. Yeah. And then he might still dip. Yeah. <laughs> Like, the NBA is so outrageous. The, it's messed up. The man. bargaining power of the players is so crazy. 
Um, but yeah, Kevin Durant, uh, we'll see what happens with him. You know, he'll be on Twitter with a burner account, absolutely chirping, staying in the NBA, and a, uh, Paulo Blanchero, uh, first overall pick to the Magic, and uh, DeJointe Murray, who was just traded to the Hawks, got into it during like, a little Summer League action. We're chirping on Instagram, both unfollowed each other. He just, during Summer League. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, who gives a shit about Summer League? I mean... It's just garbage. A little player beef, so we'll be uh, yeah. watching that. We will be. Hawks Magic, a uh, little duo, and see what uh, Blanchero and Murray are uh, going at it on the floor. Get a little rivalry going there. Definitely. And just finally, uh, just confirming that this is recording, uh, that uh, our guy Sam Alvey got knocked out. Uh, he was a big underdog. His fight Dude. career is coming to an end, but we are going to have Sam Alvey on the podcast. I'm just lining up a date we can confirm with Sam. So uh, obviously we we're rooting for you, bud, but uh, you hate to see it. Yeah, and hopefully you're doing okay, man. Yeah. Like hopefully the jaw's all right. I know yeah, his would face be, was a little bit... Well, yeah. it's a broken jaw, right? Okay, yeah. yeah so it's, I mean, that's going to be... Man, that would be one of the worst things to break. Yes. Oh, man. Yep. It's going to be a liquid diet for a little bit for old Sammy. Yeah. That's anyway, a shame, man. Smile on Sam Alvey, an absolute wagon. You'll give him a follow on uh, on socials if you have it. But, Nate, that's going to conclude the pregame show, and we're moving into quarter one, and we are talking Major League Baseball. Yeah. And yesterday in the Major Leagues, the Twins were playing the Jays in extra innings, and Whit Merrifield, freshly acquired Blue Jay, comes round and around third. Gary Sanchez cuts him off at the plate to clear out, mm -hmm. but... They challenged the play. They realized that Gary Sanchez was cutting off the he's, line to the home okay, plate. Okay, so he's blocking it. He's blocking the home plate. A <laughs> lot of controversy here. The, the Twins manager lost his mind, blew a fuse, posting him interview, rattled. I mean, I don't know because he was just, the, the throw beat him by so much, but like, I don't really know the ruling because I know you can't hit the catcher in it, but yeah. you've got to give them a line to the plate, but it's like, you're trying to catch, it was from, uh, the, the throw was from left field, so it was like, you know, right down the line. I don't. I don't really know. I man. know it's it's weird. It's almost like goalie interference in hockey. I yes. don't. No one knows. Yep. Uh, man, I miss those days when you could just tee up. The oh, catchers. those were. I gotta watch a montage of that. <laughs> There's got to be such a good montage on YouTube of just guys getting teed. Man. Oh yeah. When did they change that rule? It was recently, Nate. Yeah. I'm saying three years ago. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah but the guy, some catchers used to get absolutely. Oh, man, the mask blown. going to be yard wow. sale down there. They're oh, like yeah. safe. It's like <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> yeah, laying there, like, lifeless. Like this guy literally put his body on the line, and you just like. Oh, anyway, that was where that was where I hoot. Yeah, it's one of the best things going probably in baseball back in the day. It was the one of the more exciting plays in baseball when you just you have Prince Fielder round third oh, and oh, just out. Yeah. And Greg Zahn's there with the goalie. Greg Zahn. <laughs> Oh my God! Is he still? Does he still do the Jays? Uh, no, he got cancel cultured. Right? Yeah. Yes, he did. What he did? Yeah. Uh, I, I, a melody, a medley of things. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm not sure Best what handlebars he, in the league. Yeah, though. he actually had great suit game as he well. Did, yeah. yeah, but I, I guess that translates to getting canceled. If, you, if your suit game's strong, I mean, you think about Don Cherry as well had yeah. strong suit game, yeah, but he got it. He got yeah. canceled bad. Oh, he got absolutely snapped. Oh man. Uh, but uh, the LA Dodgers and eight are coming off a sweep of the Padres. They're now 75 and 33 in the year. I mean, we always give a lot of praise to the AL wagons and the Yankees and the, and the Astros, but holy smokes, this Dodgers team is an absolute wagon. Yeah, man, it's crazy. They're got to be, they're going to be there. All... There's a good chance. They might be able to pull it. hundred percent. There's so many teams. Like we were saying last time, it's going to be such a good uh, postseason. Yep. Like Yankees, the Mets. I want to see the Mets make some noise. Like the Jays are going to be there. Like, the Padres are an absolute, complete, and utter wagon. Oh, yeah. It's ridiculous. If you Darvish doesn't give up, just a bunch of ding ding bombs. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, no, the Padres looked uh, obviously getting swept by the Dodgers. The Dodgers are going to be a wagon. But I'm glad you brought up the Mets, Nate, because Jake DeGrom brought it, or started his second game from his comeback. I mean, he was having a gem going and gave up a, a Dansby, uh, Dansby Swanson, hit a bomb off of him. But, I mean, he looks like he was throwing 103 mile an hour fastballs. Crazy, like, man. <laughs> Like just has an absolute cannon on him, so I mean that Mets rotation. I mean you got Scherzer who was an who's an absolute lunatic had a a gem the night before uh, against Atlanta. So, I mean the Mets, Atlanta, the Dodgers. Uh, you think the Padres might be there, and I mean the, the Jays, Yankees, um, uh, Jays, Yankees, Houston Astros. I mean the winners right there in those seven teams. I know, I know, yeah, I, yeah for sure, it's crazy. And I I think back to the Yankees too, and I'm like, I wonder what their situation is going to be when it's like time to close a game out. Like, are you throwing is Pine Tower? I know he's their guy. Yeah. But, you know, he just absolutely, he can't hit the strike zone, man. Yeah. Like, he just, he's honestly throwing for sport. Yeah, just it's heaters. crazy, man. Which is like, 
I revert back to the MLB All-Star game. We need to know who's got the biggest heater in the league. Yeah. Man. I need to know I who know. throws the hardest junk in the league. I guess you could probably just, like, there's definitely some analytics guys that have added sure. up just from the game. I mean, you yeah. get the pitch every time and, the, and the, the how hard it is. So. Yeah. I wonder who it is. I bet, well, hell, if DeGrom's chucking 103. Yep. Yeah. Scherzer. Sure, Hater throws some heat. Yeah. We got the, the reliever the Padre just got. Trevor uh, Bauer throws some heat. Yeah, but more ways than one. Yes, he does um, in multiple facets of his life. Yes. Um, yeah. But uh, Nate, the MLB, I don't know. There, there's a bunch of heat throwers in the MLB. We'll look that up for next episode. Yeah. Who's throwing the most heat? But Nate, I did want to mention that London, England has announced that they will be hosting a, a game for the MLB in 2023. I think it's a smart move by the MLB. I mean, yep. you think this is a dying audience and, and going international, they're a little bit late to the party. I mean, we've seen the NBA do it. We've seen the NFL do it. I'm not sure if the NHL, the NHL yep. certainly yeah, has do done it. Sweden. Yeah, they Czech. Go, and, yeah. Yep. So they're a little bit late to the party, but it's a great move because it's, a, you know, getting that uh, globalization impact for uh, for your sport is uh, is fantastic. And, and obviously there'd be some fans over there. So. For sure. Um, and the Reds and Cubs announced the Field of Dreams game, which obviously last year the White Sox Yankees played was an absolute stud farm of a game. That was a sick game, man! What a what a yep. what a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Venue. Yes. Whoa! It was disgusting, <laughs> man. It we are struggling so today, sick, folks. So, I mean, so bear with us. But that was so. Sick. What is it? They won on a walk off grand slam. Yeah, man. Anderson for uh, yeah. the White Sox. Walk Dude, it was Dinger City in that yeah, game. It was, man. It was yeah. home run after home run, just directly yeah. in the corn. Yeah, the corn. They couldn't sell the corn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just contaminated. Yeah, with pine tar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the whole field died. So. I mean, we think about the NHL when they play on Lake Tahoe. Like, I think the MLB needs to do a better job at having. Like, you've got so many games through the best months of weather. Like, let's find some Dude. locations. I was thinking the Rocky Mountains. Like, Toronto Dude. could play a game in the Rocky they Mountains. Gotta like, have, like, they got to have, like, one ten, game at least a month. Yes, you know exactly. I mean? like, and bare minimum, spectacle. dude. Exactly. Yeah. And bring something in. Like, yeah. hell, let's do one in, like, do one in Dominican. Yes. One in Cuba. Yes. It would be unbelievable, dude. Yeah, man. Like really get unique with uh yeah. with some of the uh some of the venues and some of the uh some of the hosting well, it's uh, not sites. Like cash is holding them back. They got more <clears throat> money than you can even believe. Because it makes a must watch baseball game uh -huh. during the season, which I find they struggle to do. Obviously, Sunday night baseball is great to watch. Yeah. Um, but like having that must watch game, which the NHL does every uh, New Year's Day and, yes. and uh, I mean the NFL is just pretty much anyway, but um yeah, it's just like you need to have that must-watch game. The, the the NBA does it on Christmas Day, and yep. uh, they do different uh, events. But the MLB struggles in that area, so we'll see what happens, Nate. I hope they uh, come up with some unique situations in the MLB. But moving into quarter two, that's going to conclude quarter one. We're moving into the NHL, where the Calgary Flames have signed Jonathan Huberto to a 10-year uh, to an eight-year, $10.5 million yes. dollar AAV contract. Congrats to the Calgary Flames. Yeah, that is a big pull for them. They needed this after that disaster of an offseason. Yes. Also, yep. has Uyghur re-signed yet? Not yet. But I heard he's that there's talks of him at like six years, seven mil. Yep. I mean, man, that's a bit rich for my liking, but yep. what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? <laughs> uh, but uh, no, exactly. Uh, Mackenzie Uyghur, I mean, he may not be worth that, but... You know, you lock in a, a quality defenseman for at least three, four years. He's probably going to be worth that money, and then you hope the cap, you know, r rises. And yeah. you know, now you're just now you've replaced Johnny Gaudreau, and then you've added a, a good defenseman. So like and now you're Cooper just Cooper. is better than Gaudreau. Yeah, exactly. And, so, they're, and they're pretty similar in age. Yeah. So now you're looking at Matthew Kachuk. How do you replace Matthew Kachuk? Well, if you can bring in someone else that's you know just a little lesser quality, then I mean your team's I mean, not that much different. I mean, Nazem Kadri is kind of a like. Poverty version of Matthew Kachuk. Yeah, really. he's he's a little rough and tumble. Yep, he's not nearly as good. No, and I think that I think that he's going to go secure the bag on Long Island. Is from what I'm hearing. Like, oh I, man, that's you know? so dust. Yep, going to go to the Islanders, man. But for a guy who's only been making like what's he been making four and a half million? You yeah. know, he wants that seven eight for sure. You know, ticket for you the end blame his career. The guy. No, exactly. Nate. My Boston Bruins had a massive day today by bringing back Patrice Bergeron, David Krejci, after a year of saying, F you, Bruce Cassidy. Now Cassidy's gone. He says, actually, I'm coming back with the boys. Huge signings at the, up the middle for the Boston Bruins. You've got your top center. Now you've got a guy to play with Taylor Hall and David Pasternak on the second line with David Krejci. I mean, this yep. is massive news for Bruins fans. Also lock up Pavel Zaka to a one-year deal. Great day to be a Boston Bruins fan, man. I'm happy about yeah, this. Yeah, I betcha. P Patrice Bergeron at $2.5 million? <laughs> Like, How you doing, Jonathan Taves? Then you got what? You got yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Then you got Lawson Kraus for 4.3. Who are you taking? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's ridiculous, man. Two and a half. Krejci for a million. Yeah. A million. A million bucks. I mean, these You'll guys. you to see it. These guys love the organization. And, and Patrice Bergeron came out and said today that, I mean, it's been going on for decades in the Bruins organization. They make a pay cut to have a strong team. And, uh, and they're going to be looking okay. Obviously, you're going to be without Brad Marchand, without Charlie McAvoy for the beginning of the year. But they might have enough talent now, you know, yeah, to, to stay at least to stay afloat. competitive until yeah. they get back. It's and a damn it, shame they couldn't have got McAvoy at a little more of a team friendly deal. Yeah, nine like, and a half. I, I didn't expect yeah. that yeah. to happen. He, yeah, uh, he, uh, it's just the going rate, man. Yeah. For like, he's right handed, oh, stud defense, such a freak, man. He's just so invaluable to that team. And and like you look at their decor, I mean, like he is just the horse. Yeah, back there, and and uh, yeah, I mean, obviously you couldn't get him at that, you know, seven eight million. You give him nine and a half, and and uh, you know, obviously. You're gonna have to re up Pasternak, which is gonna be, you know, ten million. So yeah, he's that's a guy that's gonna. I know cash when in. he signed his last deal, what he got, he was like six million or something. Yeah. And he was like, oh man, I don't care, I get to yeah. play hockey. And exactly. Stuff. But like, yeah. we'll we'll see. Like, he's taking at least eight. And I think in the next couple of years, the cap will rise, and so yeah. you know, eight to ten million for that guy. I mean, he's uh, one of the pure goal scorers in the league. But I'm happy about the Bruins. Nate, like you mentioned, Lawson Crows five years at four point three million. Uh, they also have announced in Arizona they've uh, previewed their rank with five thousand seats at the Shared Arena of ASU. I was thinking, man, this arena might be uh, the most rockets per hockey game uh, in, in the NHL. Man, there's going to be a lot of good-looking women in these games. Yeah, there is. That place yeah. is going to be a zoo, too. I mean, you get 5,000 yeah. college students in oh, there. Oh, yeah. Just bomb, man. Yeah, like, imagine just, like, the local university here was just host. Like, they just had the Ottawa Senators playing there yeah. for a season. Like, Oh, my God. <laughs> it would be an absolute zoo. Zoo. Yeah. It would be. be There's a difference between 10,000 family fans and 5,000 wasted fans. Yes, there is. It's about the same. Yes. Maybe more on the 5,000. Yes. It's going to be far more The environment might be better than people are expecting. For sure. It's just the rink is a dump. Yes, it like, is. Like, to NHL standards. It is a fairly new facility at ASU, I do believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. it does look okay. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll give it to them. And it's just a short-term fix. So, yeah. obviously, the, the biggest dumpster fire in the NHL. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, Nate, World Juniors start tomorrow or yes. today when you're listening to the podcast. We got our first game for Canada on Wednesday. Some players to watch. Obviously, Connor Bedard is number one on my list. Yes. Um, Mason McTavish, look out for this guy. Kent Johnson. The stud, yeah. Kent Johnson. Jan Mysack. Yeah, Jan Mysack. Yeah, I'm maybe, maybe maybe my favorite name. He's the Montreal pick, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm excited to see this Logan Cooley kid too. I have not seen this guy play. Yeah, and obviously he just went ahead of Shane Wright. That's right. So. Yeah, so he's going to be fun to watch as well. Yes. Uh, but uh, I'm actually excited about Jan Mysack's little brother, Lick. Yeah, Lick Mysack. Yeah, yeah, he's he should a be, stud. Oh, Lick Mysack's going to be. He's a stud. Yeah, he's going to be a good player Someone as well. Got that on the Craig Button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what about Yan's brother, Lick? He's yeah. like, I haven't heard of a Lick my sack. Yeah. It's like, holy hell, Craig. Yeah. <laughs> Proofread this, bro. Yeah. It's ridiculous. That was anyway. my cod name for a while, Lick yeah. my sack. Lick my sack. So Jan and Lick, my sack, uh, will be making their debuts at the World Junior. So we're excited about that. Honestly, uh, we did you know kind of trash on it a little bit, Nate, when they announced it in the winter that they would be rescheduling the summer. But we're excited about it. Yeah, I mean, the hell with it, man. It's yep. summer. There's not a lot of sports on right now. Let's get some World Juniors and then get another World Juniors in another three months. Definitely. Let's rock. All right, Nate, we're moving into the halftime show. And this week's halftime show is brought to you by Shady Ray. Shady Ray's is one of the top and growing sunglasses uh, company in North America. You used code TDI50, you get 50% off two pairs of sunglasses. Their return policy is maybe the most outrageous return policy in the league. That's right. That's right. You lose them, break them. They don't care. No questions asked. They'll send you a new pair. Go check out Shady Ray's. And go get your pair, go get a new pair of sunglasses. Go get a pair of aviators. Go get a pair of stylish ones. Go Just go stock up on your sunglasses. You get 50% off their quality stuff. There is a lot of codes out there, ladies and gentlemen, but I am telling you for a fact, this is undoubtedly the best code on the internet right now. Yes. 50% off and unlimited sunglasses, essentially. Yes. You break them, you lose them, it happens. Yeah, get I've already got 10 set. pair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I put in a claim the last four days. Yep. No. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> It's like, oh, I lost them. Oh, they broke again. Thanks, fellas. Yeah. Broken the mail for the third time in it's three like, straight days. It's like, hey, how we doing, Shady? You're not going <laughs> to believe it, but they didn't come. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need another four just in case. Yeah. Anyway, folks, let's talk about the halftime show. It's how much would it take? And you know this. We put some obscure situations in front of each other, and then we put a monetary value on it. Nate, how much would it take for you to tent out in cougar and grizzly infested woods for a week? Oh, boy. We're talking at least 100K. Oh, yeah. Bare minimum. Man, grizzly and cougars are scary stuff. No man. shit. Yeah. Dude, cougars are insane. Yes. They would rip me to. 
Minimum a thousand, hundred thousand. But you know, if I'm in this situation where someone's actually offering out the money, I'm like, give me a million. Yes. I would do it for a hundred grand though, I think. You think? I mean, it's a week. Like there's an outside chance they don't come across you. I'm oh, exactly. sitting in that tent awake all night with a, with a meat cleaver. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Like I'm not going down to one of these cats. Yeah. So. Yeah. If you just kind of stayed in your tent. Oh, I wouldn't be moving. For a week? No. It's, there's no. no use of going outside and having one get behind you while you're not looking. Yeah. Okay. Here's your first one. Sure. Take a line drive from Vladdy Jr. directly to the nuts. <laughs> like this is going to have to be pretty high, man. Like this yeah. is just zero children. I mean, a ru- ru- ruptured both testicles. I'm going to have to say 10 million bucks. Okay. It would probably rupture both testicles. You're yep. correct. And if you think that one's no kids, you'll, you're going to love my next one. 10 million bucks. 10 million bucks. Okay. Yeah. How much would it take to box Jake Paul? Oh man. Uh, I would do that for a hundred thousand. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then do we get to split the pay-per-views? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean maybe this will give me 500 grand. I do it for 500 grand. Yeah. It's like, this, this guy's a clown. Yeah. I would try my best to get him to, he would knock me, but. Oh yeah. Like there's no doubt, but I would, I'd put in some serious training and at least try yep. to give him a go just for the people. Oh yeah. You know? Yep. It's like, let's rock. Okay. Um, so yeah, I guess 500,000. Yep. Um, okay. <clears throat> Second one, have Lance Armstrong drive over your testicles at full speed while you're lying there on the pavement and you're just waiting. <laughs> and then while you're sitting there sho- in pain, he shoves a needle directly up your rectum. How much? <laughs> what a situation. But you're man. sitting there on the Am sidewalk. I laying there on my back nude? You're laying there nude. During and the tour de France, he's flying. He's coming. Down a hill. Does he go over the handlebars? <laughs> Does he? No. It's like, that's the, yeah, it just kind of like crushes him. And don't forget about the needle part. Dude, this is a hundred million bucks, man. Yeah, it would be tough. Right? hundred million, man. That would so hurt, man. Dude. Oh, God, it would be bad. That is the most outrageous situation I've ever heard. How much would it take? hundred million bucks? hundred million. Yeah, all right. That's yeah. fair enough. How much would it take to hang out with Jackson Mahomes for a month? Oh, my God, dude. Ten million. Ten? Dude, I would be literally about to lose my shit after three days, I guarantee Oh, it. yeah. And I'd be like 27 more, this guy. Yep. You know, be so whiny and just like, he's so entitled with that, that restaurant thing. Oh, man. I would lose it. Yep. Ten million. Yep. Ten million bucks. Actually, 30 million. Give me a million a day. <laughs> yep. That'd be brutal. Okay. Have Francis Naganu punch you in the jaw as hard as he can. And as soon as he makes contact... He takes that hand and then punches you directly in the nuts. Oh my god! <laughs> like fifty million again. Yeah, you'd be broken out. jaw, knocked out, yes. ruptured testicles. Yes, it's a lot of it's a long healing time. Yeah, man, that's like six months easy of the broken jaw. Fifty mil, okay, Francis. Fifty mil to never eat sushi again. Oh jeez. Um. Man, that's tough. I, I would probably do it for a million dollars. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I would do that for a million dollars. Like, I love it, but like, yeah. I could put you it could behind go without me. it. Yeah. I could put it behind me. Yep. Because I could still eat seafood, just yep. not sushi. sushi. But yep. God, it's good. Yep. Oh, God, it's good. Okay. Have Tom Wilson blindside you directly in the head, Mark Savard style. You're oh not my. wearing a helmet. I do this for a little less because I'm a little bit more comfortable on the ice. Um, blindside. Uh, I'll take it. Uh, I'll, I'll take a couple million bucks, two million bucks. Okay. Yeah, I'll let yeah. him do it. Yeah. 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 It would be painful. But. Yeah. Uh, to only be able to watch curling and poker for entertainment for the rest of your life. No movies, no Netflix, oh. just curling and poker. Oh. If you ever wanted to watch TV, YouTube videos, oh. just curling and poker. Oh, man. It would have to be 50 million. Yeah. It would have to be. That would yeah. be grueling. I don't like poker. No. It's just not. I don't mind playing it, but watching it. Is- I don't know how to play. So oh, you'd learn it quick. No, I know, but yeah. I just like it, it's tough. I yeah. find like it's I don't know. I think I would enjoy it, but I'm I'm just so much of a blackjack guy. Yep. That I can't even do it. Okay, last one. This one's an old classic from the early days of the DI. Do the classic double jump off a trampoline directly onto a Louisville slugger. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to walk people through this? Yeah, so basically what happens is oh, you're all familiar with the double jump, obviously. You get the double the bounce, bounce yeah. up. And then meanwhile, off the trampoline, sitting there. <laughs> rightfully pumped up is a Louisville slugger. <laughs> so you're getting probably what? Like, I don't know. You're probably getting about 10 feet airtime, And then you're coming down and landing <laughs> anus first on the Louisville slugger. Oh, it's going to hurt. There's going to be some stretching. It's 10 million it's gonna be a medley of blood. <laughs> 10 million. Dude, that is the most outrageous question ever. I know. It's 10 million, dude. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. You might die. There's no way it's entering my body. Anyway. Well, it would. No shot. All right. 
All right, folks, we're moving into quarter three in the NFL, and that got out of hand quickly, but I hope we all gave you a laugh. We're moving into quarter three, and it was the Hall of Fame game, the first preseason of the NFL season, Nate. The NFL's back. Quite a boring game, to be completely honest with you. We didn't get to see Derek Carr. didn't get to see Trevor Lawrence. We did get to see Dougie P, though. We did get to see Josh McTaylons and their new coaching destinations. It was a fun game. I watched probably a few series, and I said, after this, I'm not watching, pre- I'm not watching yeah. preseason football. No. No, it's no. man preseason. It's always cool at the start. You're yep. like, oh hell yeah, let's go! But it's just not the same. No, you know, like no. Wait till that regular season gets humming. It's gonna be dirty in the trenches. I, I could like I just cannot wait. It's the best yeah. season. It's just so it's good. Like you get a month of it, and then like hockey starts, and then you get a couple more weeks, and then basketball starts, and yep. everything's in full swing. You got baseball playoffs. Oh when the NHL my! Starts. It's gonna be absolutely filth. We are right now going through the trenches of the sports world, and then we get the World Cup in November. Yeah, that's going to be sick. And then the Canada. World Juniors are here. And then the World Juniors. December. Ju- like, those four months, dude, are going to be absolute heaters. But yeah. Justin Tucker and Nate Stain in the NFL signed a $6 million contract. Highest paid kicker of all time. I was going to say, that yep. has to be. Yeah, and What's, he's... The hey? average kicker, <clears throat> I thought I looked it up, is like 850000 yeah. a few years ago when I yeah, looked yeah. anyway. Which is still pretty solid money. 100%, for yeah. For kicking a football. Justin Tucker's an absolute clutch machine, too. He hits bombs as well. Good for him, man. Six yeah. million bucks. Unreal, dude. Yeah, man. Kicking footballs, man. Odell Beckham Jr. teased on Instagram that he might be joining the Buffalo Bills. Oh, boy. Vaughn Miller uh, posted a, a, an Instagram photo, and OBJ asked him what the locker room looked like next to his stall. <laughs> so, Odell Beckham Jr. would be a nice addition for Josh Allen. That would be sick, man. Yeah. So. That would be sick. I mean, he's kind of been... He hasn't been spectacular the last little while. He's eh? a tad washed up, yeah, but he's, if he's your secondary guy behind Stefan Diggs, yep. maybe your third, if depending on how you thought Gabriel Davis's offseason went and his huge performance in the playoffs. But Odell Beckham Jr. might be going to the Bills. Kareem Hunt requests a trade out of Cleveland. Obviously, he's been the, the number two back behind Nick Chubb these last few years. So, And Kareem Hunt famously absolutely kicking the wheels off someone and not getting really too much of a suspension from it. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. He, who was it that... Uh, he wasn't the one that swung the helmet. No, that was Miles Garrett. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No, Kareem Hunt was in a hotel room, remember? And he was... Anyway, Kick I'm... A, someone? Yeah, it was and also a female. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Wow. Um, the funny story has come out from Rich Ornberger, uh, a former uh, old lineman uh, for the New England Patriots, and it was training camp. He was running late for practice. Yeah. He purposely smashed his car. Because he hadn't, he finally, he didn't have a great excuse. He overslapped and was going to be late for oh, Bill Belichick. So he just smashed it He up. just smashed his car. Oh, okay. <laughs> So uh, he told everyone he did this? On a podcast, yeah. We're talking about this guy probably played 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious, man. Yeah. That's so funny. Couldn't deal with old Bill Belichick. It's not a bad call. No, it's a pretty smart you know call. I mean? It helps yeah. you a lot. It's like, well, what was I going to do? got insurance. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. So, okay, anyway. going to go. Plus, Holly- you got unlimited money. Exactly. It's not like, you know what I mean? You could just write the thing off and buy a new. Did we talk about Hollywood Brown last episode? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did. Yeah, absolutely. Unless there's for- been anything changed. No, in he sentence, was just. But he ain't getting any jail time. No, he was wheeling and dealing criminal speeding before Seven practice. 7 o'clock in the morning, dude. Yeah. It's ridiculous. What a lunatic. Yeah. Uh, so, ne- the next few episodes, Nate, we'll kind of go. Maybe we'll do two divisions a week. We'll talk about each division, talk about the teams in the division, and yeah. how we think their seasons are going to be. And maybe, you know, and we'll talk to a little bit about fantasy sleepers and coming out. But, you know, make sure you're on the chalkboard as well we're talking all sports all the time on the chalkboard so make sure you're over on that yeah. app as well maybe get a little input from uh the listeners absolutely taking a little input from the listeners and then uh we'll see what everybody's uh, consensus is we'll ask some questions in the chalkboard and see what the the chalkboard yeah. consensus is we'll absolutely. know what our consensus see what's going on so a couple Abs- action-packed week coming up absolutely all right nate we're moving to the pga tour just a quick quarter and quarter four here to wrap it up uh, the pga players have shown some public disappointment in the live players suing the pga tour and wanting to come back for the playoffs yeah um, uh, JT Poston, uh, Harry Higgs, we got uh, uh, Max Homa all being verbal on Twitter saying, you know, come on, boys. Like, listen, you made a decision. You got your money. Like, yeah. let us be on the PGA Tour, yeah. you know? No, um, spot on. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you can't have both. You yeah. know, and you made the decision to go get paid, to go play and go enjoy your less golf, you know? I find it funny that all of them said they wanted to play less golf, but you got Patrick Reed playing two events in the Asian Tour. Now you got all these guys wanting to come yeah. play on the PGA Tour when they got their off weeks. It's like... Yeah. Gentlemen, make up your yeah. make up your your mind Let's here. Figure it out, boys. It's a joke. Jung Young Kim quadruple bogey last week. Eight goes on to win the tournament by five. Youngster out of Korea. Don't 
Don't forget about this name, Jung Young Kim. He's going to be an absolute stud. Uh, so uh, congrats to him for winning the Wyndham Championship. First guy ever to win a tournament after starting with a quad bogey on the first hole. The what man, a comeback. As soon as, I guess so. I was looking at the odds, and when uh, after he had that quad bogey, yep. plus 12,000 to win. Come on. So if somebody, you know there's somebody who dabbled. Man. Yeah, there's somebody some might have taken a sniff. Fan, yeah. You know? Yeah. It has to be out there, man. I know somebody did it. For sure. Uh, Ricky Fowler. Yep. Number 125 will be the last spot into this week's FedEx St. Jude playoffs. I'm excited, man. Ricky Fowler might be a little long, long, uh, long shot pick. He'll be plays odds will be plus 100,000. So he might be, he might be trying to have a absolute like go of it here. Yeah, man. Uh, you think he's got something to prove? Absolutely. He's ready to rock. I Absolutely. Think. Anybody you like in Nate? John Rum, any of the big guns, Shoffley, Rory, JT. I'm on JT this week. Okay. We'll give our best bets out on Wednesday. But the first round of the playoffs, top 125, there's a cut. Any of the big dogs you think are going to be running for that 15 schmell? I think Cam Smith. Yes, okay. Yeah, I think I'm in on him. Yep. He's uh, he's had a hell of a year. Yes. And, uh, you know, he's been quiet the last couple of weeks. He hasn't been playing. <laughs> you think if he's Cam been... Smith goes on, Nate, to win the FedEx Cup playoffs, he wins player of the year? He'd have to be close. Him and I mean, Scotty Scheffler. I mean, yeah. It's yeah. Like, right now, it's Scheffler. Yep. But then, I mean, it's at least going to make it uh, a two-horse race here. Yeah. But, I mean, Scheffler, holy smokes, man. What a what a stretch he had there. Remember that? What was that? That was through April. Well, when he won the Masters, Late that March, was his fourth April. one, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, March and April, he was on just an absolute, what was it, Bloodsaw Wart Path? Uh Chainsaw Warpath? No, Warsaw Buzzpath. No, Buzzsaw Warpath. That's right. A Buzzsaw Warpath of destruction. Yes, he was. God, he was dialed in Masters. Dude, he a played... chip-in, man, with Cam Smith. Holy sweet yeah, Mary, mother of God. Yeah, on hole three. That was freak. insane. All right, Nate, that's going to conclude the episode. You got a fire wagon and dog water. My fire wagon of the week is a guy by the name of Jung Young Kim. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, quadruple bogey and going on to win the tournament by five. Absolute wagon of a human being. Shout out to Patrice Bergeron as well for my runner-up in the fire wagon. Taking a $2.5 million contract. You're still one of the better sent two-way sermons in the league. Won a Selkie for the sixth time. How are you? Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, the guy's an absolute fossil. Now he's 37. But the $2.5 million, there's no better value in the league. Yep. And that's why I'm giving my fire wagon of the week to the Boston Brewer. The management. <laughs> yeah. This is unbelievable. I've never in my life, I couldn't believe it. I went on Cap Friendly today and I saw them initially before they were confirmed. Yeah. And I was like, is this some sort of sick, twisted joke? <laughs> Two point five million Patrice Bergeron. Yeah. Ridiculous. Boston, bravo, good shit. Yeah, it's uh it's unbelievable. Uh my dog water of the week, Nate, this is gonna be an interesting one, but yep. it's Bill Mickelson. Okay. And he is officially my dog water of the year. Okay. And I know it will probably should wait for December, late December, to talk about that. But this guy, man, he was suspended by the tour. He's like, he's obviously been in tons of uh, debt, money, gambling debt, and he's bringing back the live players for this civil case against uh, the PGA Tour. I mean, I just think that Phil Mickelson is just such a clown, man. He's just pissing his legacy apart, man. And I, uh, I just have a strong hate for lefty these days. So Phil Mickelson's my dog water. He of the certainly year. hasn't had a terrific career of being liked. No. That's for certain. No. So that is a good, that is dog water of the year early, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. And we will see in December if there's another dog yeah. water of the year. Absolutely. Um, for me, I haven't got one right off the top of my head, but you know what I'm going to go with? Who? Jonathan Taves again. <laughs> okay. For no apparent reason. Besides, so many people now are asking me, why do you hate Jonathan Taves? Yep. I just do. <laughs> I just don't like him, man. Yep. He's like Captain Serious. It's such a dumb thing. Like, have a little personality. Yep. Just don't love the guy. Listen, I get he won three cups. He's just not that good. And that's the end of the story. Also, is Patrick Kane underrated now? I don't know. Is he? Kind of. Yeah. No one even talks about the guy. Yeah, he's a freak. He's an absolute nasty freak. I guess he's going to the Bruins. Is he? Playing on the top line with Marshawn and Bergeron. <laughs> that top six would look out. <laughs> be absolutely stupid. <laughs> Wonder, I can't see him in another jersey, man. I know. It's weird. Anyway. It's an absolute ledge. Go download the Chalkboard app. Go check out Shady Rays. Go check out Manscaped. Guys, well, we appreciate you. We'll be back on Friday. Thank you for waiting today. It was a long weekend for the kids once again. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate your support. Go and have a great week. And don't forget to absolutely feed out there, ladies and gentlemen. Let's rock. Let's <laughs> rock.